Now there's another method of releasing the queen, and if this is your first time, I recommend the second method. You see, the queen is young and nervous, and she's attracted to light, so she might try to fly away. So instead of pulling back the wire screen, you can also remove one of the corks and let the queen come out on her own. Now a queen cage has a plug of candy at one end and the other end with no candy, but there's a cork at both ends. Most people remove a cork on the end with the candy. This lets the workers on the outside eat through the candy and gradually release the queen. However, I prefer to remove the cork on the other end, since I've already determined that the workers are accepting the queen, and I want her released quickly. Now after a few minutes, you can come back and remove the empty queen cage. Our queen in colony one is dead. You have to expect to lose a queen from time to time. We'll have to order a new one right away. One thing I haven't talked about yet, but I really need to, is bee stings. If you're going to keep bees, you're going to get stung. That's just a fact of life. But there are some things you can do to cut down on the number of stings. For instance, never ever swat at a flying bee. Bees respond aggressively to fast motions or jarring vibrations, and if you swat a bee, it will only aggravate it more. Instead, learn to work calmly with your bees. Watch experienced beekeepers and see how smoothly they work with their bees, how they brush them aside with their fingers to avoid pinching them, for example. Folklore says that bees can smell the fear on a novice beekeeper, or that they recognize their owner. But instead, it's really the skill of the beekeeper that cuts down on the amount of stinging. When a bee stings you, its poison sac and stinger remains in your skin. Never pull this poison sac away, because that injects all the remaining venom into you. Instead, use your fingernail and scrape it away, or your hive tool. Now for some more honey and bee trivia. The life expectancy of a honeybee varies with the season. During summer, it is around three weeks. In the winter, it can be as much as six months. It's been four days since we installed the bees, so the colonies are ready for their second teramycin treatment. The manufacturer recommends three treatments at four-day intervals. Our first treatment was the day we installed the bees. Our third treatment will be four days from now. It's important to remember we have to allow at least four weeks between our last treatment and the day we put on our honey supers. We don't want to risk contaminating the honey with teramycin. And that is how you set up your beehives. It doesn't need to be difficult. For the first time, the hardest part is opening up a package of live bees. But after you cross that hurdle, your apprehensions will grow less and less as you learn to appreciate the wonders of a bee colony. All we did today was provide the bees a nest site and temporary food. The bees still have to accept their queen, build comb, begin rearing brood, scout out local nectar and pollen sources, and, ultimately, produce surplus honey for us to harvest. It's our job to help them along. Let's go over the important points we saw today. First, expect an early morning phone call from the post office the day your bees arrive. Keep the packages cool and shaded until you can install them. Before you open the packages, Spray the bees with sugar syrup to keep them from flying so much. Take out about half the frames in a hive and set them aside. Take out the queen in her cage and suspend the cage between two frames. Then simply pour the bees on top of the queen and into the hive. Return all the frames except one, close the lid, and give the bees sugar syrup. After 24 hours, 
check the queen and release her if the bees are receptive to her, or else let the bees release her through the candy plug. Be sure to follow manufacturer's recommendations for teramycin and Fumadil bee treatments. The bees must be treated for stress-induced illnesses. Just imagine if you were snatched out of your house, dropped in a mailbox, turned upside down and dumped into a strange empty house in a new location. That's what a bee experiences and it's a time of severe stress. In our next show, we will see just how fast spring unfolds in the apiary. We'll see the bees build new comb, and we'll watch the queen begin producing the next generation of workers. We'll watch those workers develop and emerge to a brief life of labor. We'll monitor the first nectar flows and give the bees empty supers and hope they fill them with honey. It's a time of unrestrained optimism for beekeepers. Maybe this is the year for a record honey crop. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.